Hello everyone, I'm Pavel and I welcome you all to the first video of my channel. Today we'll be discussing about calculus. In this course, we'll be learning two different topics of calculus, namely differentiation and integration. We'll start with differentiation and the first topic we'll be discussing is limit. Before getting into the depth of limits, at first we need to have some clear ideas about function. We need not have in-depth knowledge of function, but you need to know the basic requirements of function. There are two conditions of a function. Say, a function is something which takes some inputs and gives you some corresponding outputs, to say the least, and in an easy manner. And a function has two conditions. The first condition is that each and every input of the function must have a corresponding output. Second condition is that no input can have more than one output. So today we'll be focusing more on the first condition, which says that each and every input must have an output. Otherwise, we cannot call that function as a function. So that will be not a function. So if we look into this function, say for example, f of x equals to x square, we'll be trying to put some different values of x and we'll see whether we're getting some outputs or not. Say if we put x equals to 1, then f of x equals to 1 square equal to 1. If we put x equal to 2, f of x equals to 2 square equal to 4. If we put x equal to 0, f of x equal to 0 square equal to 0. If we put some negative values as well, so say we are putting x equals to minus 3, then f of x equals to minus 3 square equals to 9. So we can see that in this way, we'll get outputs for each and every values of x. So which satisfies the first condition of function that we are getting corresponding outputs for each and every input. So we can see that for values greater than 0, we are getting outputs for the values of 0 and less than 0, we are also getting outputs. And in this way, we can see that for each values of x, we are getting some outputs. So this is a function. But sometimes there will be some situations when we'll see that we are not getting outputs. So in those situations, what do we do? Whether we will be cancelling those terms as functions or whether we will try to find some way to calculate those values. So let's see what we have. Say we have a function f of x equals to x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1. So let's get started with some values. Say x equals to 1, x equals to 2, x equals to 3 f of x equals 2, f of x equals 2, f of x equals 2. If we put x equals to 3, we'll get 3 square minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1, which is equal to 3 square minus 9 minus 1 divided by uh, 2. So this is equal to 4, and this is 2 square minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1, which is 3 divided by 1, which is 3. But here we will see that 1 square minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 resulting in 0 divided by 0. And we know that 0 divided by 0, this is undefined. So what will we do now? We are not getting any outputs for the input x equals to 1. So mathematicians somehow found a way to calculate this value. And we will be now looking into that procedure. So what is that procedure? The procedure is that we are not being able to put the values of x equals to 1. So we'll try to put values which are close to 1. What do I mean by that is if we put 1, we are getting some problems that we are getting results as 0 divided by 0, which is undefined. So we will give values which are much more closer to 1. So when we say we will put values closer to 1, we have two options. We can either start with values which are less than 1 and then gradually increase, or we can start with values which are greater than 1 and gradually decrease. 
So we'll have two different ways to calculate the values. So let's see how it would work. As we have already seen that we can move towards one from two different directions, whether uh, we might try from values less than zero or we can start from values greater than one and gradually decrease. So let me draw a box and calculate the corresponding values. Here I'm writing x and this is f of x equals to x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Again x and f of x equals to x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Here we'll be starting from values which are greater than 1 and gradually decrease. Say we are putting values x equals to 1.5. If we look and into the number line you can see that 1.5 is somewhat closer to 1. So we are putting the values 1.5 and we'll be putting different values which will be much more closer to 1. So when we put x equals to 1.5, if we calculate the values of f of x, we'll see that 1.5 square minus 1 divided by x minus 1, that is 1.5 minus 1 and 1.5 square minus 1 will get the result as 2.5. So you can see that we are getting some values for 1.5. So let's see if we get much more closer what happens. So let's put the value 1.1. As you can see 1.1 is much more closer to 1, right? We'll be putting this value somewhat closer to 1, right? Okay. So 1.1 will give 1.1 square minus 1 divided by 1.1 minus 1 and you will get the result 2.1. If you have calculator around you, you can calculate these values. Again, if we put 1.01, which is much more closer to 1 than the upper two values, we will be getting as 2.01. If we put 1.001, we will get 2.001. You can calculate this value. I have calculated earlier. So I am not writing each and every values. In this way, if we increase the number of zeros, we'll see that the result is approaching towards 2. Because if we put one point infinite number of zeros and then a 1, say 0 dot dot, dot 1, we'll get the result as 2.0 dot, dot dot 1. So here are infinite number of zeros and we'll see that this is 2.000 in this way infinite number of zeros followed by one so we can decide now that this value is approaching towards one in mathematics we see we say that x tends to one that is the value of x is approaching towards one and what is happening to the output the output is moving towards and this is moving towards 1. In mathematics, we call this procedure as limit that if we can put values which are closer to 1, that is x tends to 1, this sign is called tends to. As we can see, x is approaching towards 1. So we say that x tends to 1. In that case, the values of the function x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1 will be equal to 2. This is the concept of limit. So in short, we can say that if we are being able to put the value as 1 or much more closer to 1, we will be getting the output as 2. This is the concept of limit. So this was one part of the idea that we approached from values greater than 1 and gradually decreased the values now we'll see from the other end we'll be starting from values less than one and gradually increase the values say for example x equal to 0 0.5 then if we put 0 0.5 square minus 1 divided by 0 0.5 minus 1 you'll get 1.5 if we put the value 0 0.9 which is much more closer to 1 than 0 0.5 as you can see that 
this will be 0 0.9 which is much more closer to 1 then we'll get the output as 1.9 and if we put 0 0.99 we'll get 1.99 if we put 0 0.999 we'll get 1.999 0 0.9999 we'll get 1.9999 so in this way we can see that if we increase the number of nines that is if you put 0 0.9 and infinite number of nines followed by 9 which is almost 1 i'll show you in another video that this is almost equals to 1 then we'll get 1.99 dot dot 9 so we can see that these values are approaching towards 1 so if we approach towards 1 the result is approaching towards 2 so in both cases we have seen that if we start from either direction if we start from values less than one and gradually increase the values and if we start from values greater than two and gradually decrease the values in either case we are getting the result as two so we can finally decide that the result must be two because in this way we are approaching towards one we are getting two again if we approach this way we are also getting two so the final result must be two this is what we say in limit that if x approaches or tends towards 1 then the value of the function that is the output of the function will be equal to 2. This is the concept of limit. But the good news is that we will not calculate each and every mathematical problems in this way. We will have uh, some knowledge about how to calculate the problems of limits and we will learn some different techniques and shortcut procedure to calculate the values of those functions in the later parts of the series but today we have got some ideas about what limit is so in short what is if i say the basic idea of limit is that when we are not being able to calculate the values of those functions directly in those cases we try to put values which are much more closer to the input and we will decide that if we can move towards that particular value then the result would be equal to the output which is approaching right so this was the basic idea of limit today we have discussed about uh, from the function with the conditions of functions and then we have discussed about limit and in the later sections of the series i mean from the next videos we'll be learning about the procedures and techniques how to calculate limit and we will not discuss in details that how we have approached towards that value so will not uh, take much time for each and every problems in the later sections so uh, this was all for today's video and if you learned something if you think that this video was helpful for you please let your friends know about my channel and subscribe my channel and i wish and i hope that you will be with me in the upcoming days which will inspire me making more videos so till the next video stay well pray for me i also pray for you stay fine allah Hafiz.